Greetings. I thought we'd take a look inside this old switch before we get rid of it. No, not this one. It'd be far too easy. This one. This is a Cisco Catalyst 6513, which is the largest of the 6500 range with 13 module slots, hence the name. It's about 12 years old and unfortunately doesn't support 10 gig connectivity without adding more line cards. To support those line cards properly, we need to upgrade the supervisor cards. And to upgrade the supervisor cards, we need to upgrade the whole chassis from a 6513 to 6513E. So, it's been traded in for a brand new switch. Before it gets sent away though, let's take a look inside. This is a modular chassis where the cards can be removed just by undoing the thumb turn screws on either side. You pull the levers and you slide them out. This can even be done with the power still on, which is why it's got dual supervisor cards in slots 7 and 8. If one goes bang, the other one will keep on running the system and then you can swap the dead card out without shutting the whole thing off and bringing your whole network to a standstill. First on the table is one of the two identical supervisor cards. In this case, a supervisor 720 with 40 gigabits per second of switching capacity per slot and 720 gigabits per second total bandwidth. How do you get 720 when the chassis only has 11 line card slots total in 440? I'm not sure. It might be to do with the switching capacity being full duplex, i.e. both directions at once for a total of 880. Uh, you'd have to ask a Cisco technician, really. Anyway, See, there's a mix of chips here. Some of them are Cisco branded, but there are at least two Silent Spartans, some RAM made by Samsung, goodness knows what under the heat sinks, and a few Broadcom gigabit transceiver chips near the front, as these cards also have a pair of Ethernet ports on the front. Plugged in on the left hand side of the motherboard is a multi-layer switch feature card or MSFC, in this case an MSFC3. There's some Samsung RAM on the bottom together with some static RAM bit by Micron and by Toshiba and there's a bit of AMD flash memory as well. Over on the top side you can see we've got some of the half gig memory modules, another Xilinx chip and one of the two identical Cisco CPUs on the card. One handles layer 2 switching, the other handles layer 3 switching and routing. In fact, you can have the same Supervisor 720 in either a 6500 series switch like we've got here, or a 7600 series router, which looks almost identical. Uh, another mystery heatsink chip, another DIMM and some compact flash memory in a DIMM adapter, and that's your lot for these. The other card plugged into the motherboard is the Policy Feature Card, or PFC. If you want to know what role the MSFC and the PFC cards play in the Switch, there's a link in the video description straight to the Cisco website where they cover all these cards. There's not much else to see on the bottom of this card, just an Altera Max and a bit of RAM and not much else. But if you thought that was featureless, wait till you see the top side. Because most of this is under heat sinks. And because we've effectively sold this switch, I can't pull them off to see what's underneath. Next up is one of the two 24 port SFP cards. Now, SFPs are small form factor pluggable modules which let you connect copper or various types of fiber just by plugging the appropriate module into the slot. SFPs are rated at 1 gig. You can also get SFP Plus modules now, which won't work with this card, which will work at 10 gig. Once again, this is a card with a door to card fitted, in this case a centralized forwarding card or CFC, which can be upgraded to a distributed forwarding card or DFC, which we didn't do. There's absolutely nothing to see on the CFC because of the heatsink, so we'll get that out of the way, only to be faced with even more heatsinks. These cards, by the way, have a metal plate bolted on the back, so we can't see the back side, although looking in from the side there's not a lot behind there anyway. On the top there are only a few chips uncovered. There's some Cisco's, some Xilinx's again, some RAM, there's a quarter gig DIMM, and along the front possibly the only chips that might be of interest, which are half a dozen Marvel quad port fibre transceiver chips. And as this is only a 24 port card, the other half is pretty much empty.
Another card with a very similar layout is one of the four 48 port gigabit ethernet cards. This one has a newer version of the same CFC daughter card with smaller heatsinks so you can at least see a little bit more of what's on it. But underneath, once again, it's a plethora of heat sinks on almost everything bar the RAM and the Xilinx chips. And this time, we can't even see what the transceiver chips are because they've got heat sinks on them as well. But at least it gives you an idea of how much is in one of these switches, how many chips go in to make up one of these things. It's not just like everything all connecting to one or two chips. There's a lot of stuff in these things. Not much left to see now, but with the cards removed, you can see the back plane that joins them all together. And there are extra connections on the first two slots, and also on slots 7 and 8, because 7 and 8 are used for the two supervisor cards. It looks like you've got four separate back planes here, but as you can see from this picture around the back, it's actually one big board. And around the front, it's just got this uh, metal frame to sort of distribute the, uh, the loading and the weight. Alongside, we've got a fan tray with 12 48 volt fans on it, and it takes the air through from side to side in this chassis. Uh, different models have different airflow, um, these ones are side to side. Finally, at the bottom, there's a pair of 2.5 kilowatt power supplies. Again, these are hot swappable, so you can run on one while you replace the other. Or you could even move it from one, su one complete supply to another. You could, you know, you could disconnect from uh, a mains power and reconnect to onto a UPS or onto a generator one supply at a time and keep the whole thing up and running. And that's it. Here's the switch powering back up again. Perhaps in another 12 years or so we'll be able to come back for another look. This time at the switch we bought to replace it. Thanks for watching.